So it looks like Intel got sick and tired of seeing AMD and Nvidia hog all the attention with PC hardware releases, and said, hey, don't forget about us, let's discuss the latest rumors and leaks surrounding their 11th generation core desktop processors. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be discussing Intel, something that I feel like I haven't done in ages. But to be fair, these last few years for Intel have been straight up just boring and not very exciting. Since Skylake was released back in 2015, Intel has been stuck in a slump. Since then, all they've done is just rebrand the same core architecture, tacked on a few more cores, bumped up the clock speeds ever so slightly, and called it a day. All the while remaining on the same old 14 nanometer process, albeit making some tweaks to it, and now we're on what, a 14 nanometer? plus 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 process i've honestly lost count at this point since amd launched ryzen back in 2017 it was clear to me that intel was going to have its hands full amd had already overtaken them in multi-core workloads and threadripper just absolutely decimated intel's hedt line of processors to the point where we actually haven't even seen a new launch from intel for that segment in a while the only reason why Intel still remained relevant was because they held the gaming crown, and this was due to the fact that they held a slight advantage in single core workloads. Now, when it comes to single core performance, the reason why AMD was still behind despite having higher IPC with Zen 2 is because they couldn't reach those high clock speeds like Intel could, and performance was hampered by high latency. However, if you've been keeping up with the PC hardware industry, you'll have known that with AMD's latest Ryzen 5000 series, which are powered by their Zen 3 architecture, Intel has lost its one and only gaming crown. If it wasn't for the horrible supply of Ryzen 5000 chips and the absurdly higher prices over MSRP, then Intel would be barely selling right now. But ironically, right now, 10th gen chips can offer better value over Ryzen 5000 chips because of that reason. Now, AMD's fierce competitive chips wasn't the only problem Intel had to worry about. But like I said earlier, with 14 nanometer plus, Intel has been having their own problems with their newer process nodes. We were supposed to have seen Intel come out with their 10 nanometer desktop chips a long time ago, but they just kept on delaying it despite telling their shareholders, no, no, everything's fine and we're still on track leading them to ultimately just cancelling it and admitting that yeah, it was broken. This is what led to them just rehashing Skylake over and over again on the desktop platform, which is what has led to them to lose that performance crown and why it's been so boring, they just never innovated. Though it looks like there is some light at the end of this dark tunnel, and it looks like next month we shall see Intel release a new series of desktop processors that aren't based on Skylake. Over the past month, we've been seeing a lot of rumors and leaks pertaining to Rocket Lake, which is supposed to be a brand new architecture based off of Cypress Cove, which is actually a variant of Ice Lake, which is the microarchitecture their mobile CPUs are based on. Now, Rocket Lake was originally supposed to be released on 10 nanometers, but since that's not an option anymore, Intel has decided to actually backport the architecture to their 14 nanometer process. At this point for Intel, it's the node that just keeps on giving. Now when we compare Rocket Lake to the Comet Lake architecture, some of its biggest changes will be that it will yield a 10% higher IPC improvement, although I have heard that figure could be higher. The integrated graphics will actually get a huge overhaul with their new Z graphics, which do look quite impressive for mobile chips at least. And there will be some changes in terms of I.O. such as finally having support for PCI Express 4.0, higher stock memory support, better USB standards, and more. Now as for the leaks, we have seen some numerous screenshots posted from the various leakers that contain information such as benchmark results from popular CPU testing programs like Cinebench and CPU-Z that have come from some engineering samples. Some of the results seen were from engineering samples of the Core i9-11900 and we even saw a Geekbench 5 result which was uh, from a Core i7-11700K CPU which showed some promising single core performance which I'll get back to later. There have been some various other leaks and benchmarks posted and I'll have links for everything I mentioned in the video description and more so you guys can check them out for yourselves. I'm not going to be going over every single result as the scores are generally where you'd expect them to be and you know 
it would make this video go on forever and, and me regurgitating just scores would be boring and just not the point of the video. One of the more important aspects I wanted to talk about in regards to Rocket Lake was the fact that this new generation of CPUs will only top out at 8 cores, which is a downgrade from the previous gen. The Core i9-11900K will allegedly only have 8 cores and 16 threads, down from 10 cores and 20 threads of the Core i9-10900K. The rest of the i7 and i5 lineup will remain the same as the previous generation, with the i3s actually being rebranded Comet Lake CPUs, so they won't be using the new Rocket Lake architecture. So seeing this disappointed me because honestly, there will be no point in buying that i9-11900K unless you want the fastest single core CPU out of the box. You're probably better off buying the i7-11700K and just overclocking it as that too will have the same core and thread count as the i9. Literally, for this generation's i9 CPUs, you're just paying a premium for higher clock speeds and potentially higher overclocking uh, results. And while it will probably be faster in gaming when compared to a Core i9-10900K, it will lose out to it when it comes to multi-core performance due to having two less cores and will get absolutely slaughtered by the Ryzen 9 5900X. And this CPU, because it's an i9, will fall into that higher price bracket, therefore will be compared against the Ryzen 9 5900X, and it won't be a good showing at all for Intel. Now since we're talking about competitiveness against Ryzen, in terms of single core performance, if we're to go off of that leaked Geekbench 5 score, Intel might be able to take back their gaming crown. Since the i7-11700K got a score of 1800, and most 5900X CPUs average single core speeds of around 1600 to 1700, there is a bit of an advantage there for the Intel CPU. Also, this could be an early engineering sample with lower clock speeds and, you know, an engineering board probably paired up with lower memory. The i9 will have a higher turbo, which should widen that gap too. Then again, this is just a synthetic benchmark, which isn't necessarily reflective of a real world scenario. But if you ask me, I'm thinking that Intel should regain the gaming crown with Rocket Lake, though it won't be a huge victory for them, and the results won't be noticeable, and again, it's just going to be one of those situations where unless you're gaming at 1080p with a high-end GPU and playing some very CPU-bound games, then you know, you won't really mo notice much of a difference. Heck, I even tell people that, you know what, Zen 2 against Zen 3 holds up pretty well in gaming, but where Intel will still seriously lose is multi-core performance due to AMD having better SMT performance. Though the 11700K and 11600K, god those names are ridiculous, should compete well against the 5800X and 5600X respectively. It's the i9 that won't look so appealing due to all the reasons I mentioned earlier. Now, as I said earlier, right now with the current situation, Ryzen 5000 CPUs are being sold at a premium with prices well above MSRP, which can actually deter a lot of interested buyers. I mean, right now I can go out and purchase a Core i9-10850K, which is readily available and is cheaper than a Ryzen 7 5800X, which are currently going for like 620 to 650 Canadian dollars, which is just absurd for an 8-core CPU, which then makes it a no-brainer. I'll get more cores, gaming performance is pretty close, if not better if you can tweak it. The same goes for the i5-10600K. It's actually about $100 cheaper right now when compared to a Ryzen 5 5600X. This is actually pretty funny to see because it used to be that AMD would give you better value for your money and that Intel was the more expensive and premium brand, and now it's like the tables have completely turned. I hope Intel comes to the realization that they actually do have a good opportunity to position their 11th generation processors in a manner where they'll come off as a better choice over AMD's Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, and that's simply due to price. If they can undercut AMD by a good margin, then hey, they'll get my recommendation. Maybe not the i9, but the i7s and i5s look like a pretty good darn choice. And hey, we're also hearing some rumors that Intel might actually do just that, along with not just pricing, but but their budget B560 chipset motherboards will get memory overclocking support, where you couldn't actually do any overclocking of any sort on their budget chipsets. So you'd be locked to the official supported speeds, which I believe was 2666 or 2933 megahertz, Something like that. Point is, you'd be leaving a good chunk of performance on the table by holding back the CPU with slower memory. 
But if AMD can enable users to overclock to their heart's content on cheaper B350, B450, and B550 motherboards, then I don't see why Intel cannot do the same going forward. Because they need to wake up from their anti-consumer tactics and realize reasons like this are one of the most important influencers as to why people flock towards AMD. Just a more consumer-friendly platform. So I hope they learn from their past mistakes, take notes from AMD in order to make their next generation more attractive because they'll need it. They've got some good opportunities here, and it'd be a damn shame to see if they don't take it. But that will do it for this video. Keep your eyes peeled, as there will be more rumors and leaks to come by, I'm sure of it. And as we get more information, I'll be posting and making content around it, so stay tuned for that. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.